Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about when and why to use weld through primer. I was asked this question, and uh, we're going to go over that. I uh, also wanted to mention, I, I'm sure you can notice back here in the back, I used to have a lot of stuff, everything's starting to look plain. Uh, kind of give you an update on what's going on. Uh, as you know, the, the end of last year ended up really strange. We was on uh, conference calls and Zoom, kind of ended the semester that way. But unfortunately, some things happened at my work. Uh, the college that I work at ended up close, closing some programs uh, with bus budget issues, and my program happened to be one of them. So, you know, I was in search for a job, but I did find one, uh, and I will be moving to Colorado. I took a job in Thornton, Colorado, working for Bowman Technical Education Center. So I'm looking forward to that, but it's been a lot of work. You know, if uh, you're someone like me that has lived somewhere for years, uh, I might be a hoarder, I don't know, but I have accumulated so much junk, and I'm trying to sell it. I sell the jet skis, my boat, uh, just all kinds of stuff, trying to get rid of stuff so I don't have so much uh, things that I have to pack and get rid of. But I've also been packing, and uh, I don't know. Just moving is not one of my favorite things to do. But, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, what I've been doing. So I've kind of been hit and miss on the videos. I did a lot right before school ended, trying to help get everybody ready for the end of the school year since, uh, you know, all the schools was canceled. And that's another thing. I hope, I hope it's back to normal in August whenever I show up to class there. Oh, by the way, this is a brand new building or a brand new program. The building's just been remodeled, brand new paint booth, new tools, new everything. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm so excited. And I'm getting to help pick out which tools we want what we need and so i'm really looking forward to this but uh the only downfall uh you know i've been looking around and i'm going to be going there next week uh take a, a load of stuff there uh, it's a little bit more expensive or a lot more but the housing is a lot more expensive there so that's uh, kind of one of the, the cons to this deal so um may have to generate some additional income i've been thinking about things uh you know, but do I make more videos? I don't want to give this up. I'm getting closer to that 100,000 mark subscribers. I'm at 96.5 or something like that, 96,500. But so we're getting close there, but I think I'm going to have to, uh, you know, there's a lot of hail damage that goes through there in the summers. And that'd be perfect because I'd be off in the summers. And if I estimated uh, for insurance companies or PDR companies, you know, work claims for them, did the estimating. Uh, that could be some good side income for summers or maybe after work. I uh, haven't got that all set up. I think I'd probably have to, to get a business started in that so that I could subcontract to these companies to do that. I don't know. I'm still checking into that to see what I would need to do. But uh, that would be a good place for it because Denver gets hard with hail damage every year. And, uh, and you know, it's, that usually happens in the summer. So that might be something. Um, or may just go work part-time somewhere. I don't know. I'm still thinking about all that and, and, you know, what my options are. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the question that we had. I just want to kind of explain myself because it's been a while. Um, Matt's Vintage Shop says, uh, Dear Donnie, I, I am confused on weld-through primer when repairing rust hole. Do you need to, do you need weld-through primer on it? The new, the, the new metal piece and the car body metal where the new metal is being welded. Now I understand what you're, you're asking here. Uh, you're just uh, kind of confused of whenever, when do you need weld through primer? What's the purpose of it? And so forth. Get, there we go. Um, so you don't necessarily always need weld through primer. What weld through primer is for is to provide corrosion protection where you can't get to after it's been welded. So for example, if you, uh, Let's just say this was primed with epoxy or something, and you welded it. Well, it burn that epoxy off whenever you use welding. Uh, that's what weld through primer is. It doesn't burn off. It's a zinc rich, usually, uh, some, some copper, but mostly zinc is the most popular coating that will not burn off. It will provide corrosion protection. And really, the only places you need weld through primer is your welding right here. You just, need it in, it, you just need it in here where you cannot get to. You're not going to be able to prime that afterwards or apply any type of corrosion protection 
after this has been welded together. So if you take it apart, so right here, and that marks where it needs it, and right here, that's where the weld through primer would be. In fact, you don't want weld through primer all over here either, because one of the problems with weld through primer, other coatings does not adhere properly to it. So if you had this some overspray of a weld through primer out here, and you sanded it, and you know did your priming or whatever, uh, it may not stick. May have an adhesion failure. So uh, you, if you do get some overspray, be sure and uh, clean that off. Yeah, it's only designed where you can't get to. Now, if you're doing a butt weld, you said a rust hole. I don't know if you're using a backing plate back behind it, but if you're just butting something up like this, well, you wouldn't necessarily need it because you can get to this whole front surface and you can put epoxy or whatever type of corrosion protection you're using. And on the back side, you can get back to that with the corrosion protection. You know, some of the wax coating or whatever depends on it's, you know, where you're doing the rust hole at. Or you might possibly be able to get back there and sand and put some epoxy back there. So, really, on a butt weld, if, if, you, if you're just welded up like that, you don't necessarily need it. I would, you know, wouldn't really serve a purpose there. But yeah, it's anytime you have a lap joint of some sort, it's just for that surface right there that you can't get to afterwards. That's when you want to use weld through primer. Now, some metals have are galvanized, you may not need it. You know, you may not need it with the galvanized coatings, but that's a Hopefully that helps explain weld through primer. I had one more I'm going to go over real fast. Um, JDM Chick says, hey, I got a hood that's got a broken paint like that. I'm sanding it with 80 grit, and I cannot get it smooth. I got a hard edge all the way around. I went to 120, and it's still, and it's still not smoothing out. I'm a student still struggling with this. Can you please help? Uh, that is something that, uh, that we're talking about your feather edge. You know, you're trying to, to, to smooth out that line. And if you just keep sanding on that line, you're just going to keep taking it back. So what you need to do whenever you're feather edging. So see if I can write upside down like this. So here's your paint edge right here. So what you're doing when you're feather edging, scoot around a little bit. You're taking that step there. And you're basically just gradually going from the top surface to the bottom surface, making a smooth feather like that. So if you, in order to do that, you want each layer, like let's say this is your primer, you want that to be at least a quarter of an inch wide, that layer. You know, each layer you do, try to get a quarter, at least a quarter of an inch. And if it's a quarter of an inch, then it won't, you won't feel it too much. But in order to do that, I think what the problem is, you're, you're sanding right at this line, trying to smooth it out. Well, come back here a little bit and start sanding back here and work towards that line. Because you're, gonna, you're, you're removing material over here, and you're gradually getting down to that. So especially if you're tilting your DA real hard right here, it's going to keep going right there, and you're just going to keep moving that line back. So try flattening out your DA. And, and sand the surface behind it a little bit and work towards that line. So hopefully that helps. And usually with uh, feather edging, I only use 220. So that's just my preference. Uh, but usually works pretty good. So hopefully that helps. If not, leave another question. And again, I know I haven't got to a lot of these questions and I've been behind, but I will do my best. Uh, probably it'll be a little bit before I do another one. Uh, I'll be going to Denver. It's a, uh, Thornton's just a little bit north of Denver there uh, next week sometime. And so, you know, it might be pretty challenging trying to, to do this. So, but anyway, I, I do plan to keep this going. I'm just a little, going to be a little slower probably for a while. Uh, usually in the summers is when I uh, do more videos. And then when I go to work, you know, I kind of cut back a little bit. And it's probably not going to happen this summer. You know, I, I did several right there at the end of the school year just to help out. But uh, been busy ever since. So anyway, I do thank you for watching. And uh, I hope that you have a great 4th of July. And hope you stay safe. You know, um, I know, uh, you know, and I know I, if we do go back face to face, I know we're all going to be wearing masks. So we ought to be used to that in this industry. You know, we, we're using wet respirators or dust masks. Uh, but it's going to be a little different. But I do hope it is back to face to face, you know, teaching in the class. You know, I'm really tired of the, of the Zoom stuff, you know, trying to teach on that. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you.
in the next video.